the motion is in and out. Now what's happening here with this hinge, when I start, there's a dip in the wrist. And when I go in for the downbeat, that hinge straightens out. So now this line is straight out. And when I come back, tip, shank, tip, the dip happens. So now we're aligning ourselves with physics the way a cobra would strike, let's pray. And it's the exact same motion when you shoot pool. highest drum with the left hand and move the pattern down the drums. it like this. So with, the, with those ghost notes, you could ghost them. Bring them out a little bit more and play with, with more gusto. Build up the quarter notes in the bass drum. Back to the intro and laying into those. Little fill. Dialing it back here, hook fill number two. Sucking it back into the verse. The bass drum here. Dun, dun. Accent. Dun. Dun, dun. That's new from before. Back in the crashes. Question answer fill. Okay, now we build up with eighth notes this time. Kind of Keith Moon like there. Build into the guitar solo. Down, tap, up. Now I kind of have a bastardized version of molar. I know there's the proper molar thing where you gotta. You have to learn the motions like so. But if you just go with a big dip right here in the wrist, down, keep it right there, tap, up. And again, it's not, that's the hot stove comparison. Notice that the butt of the stick is higher than the, the, the tip. That's where this thing comes from because the molar developed from playing field drums, trying to get the biggest sound that you can with big motions and a big sound. It'd be the same thing if you're a match grip player over here. But I play a traditional grip, so it's. Now when I'm going up, the elbow's coming up, and again, this is higher than the tip of the stick, because I'm getting ready for this motion. Down. Tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, tap, tap, tap. And that's taking 
very little effort at all to do. There's no tension in it. Because, again, I'm loose. I can't teach you how to do this. But I can tell you what the motions are to be able to do that. You have to learn the big motions first. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, so tap. So we'll play a six stroke roll, alternating triplets in right, left, right. And a six stroke roll beginning with the left, triplets left, right, left. So it's This is a good exercise to help you alternate right, left, right, and left, right, left triplets and your six stroke rolls quickly. Your gear shifting is put to a test with this one. And then we reverse it to a left flam, right, left. So if we put them together, notes on the toms. Each hit here is harder than the one before. Building to the big one here, bam. Hook fill again. Bam. Second reintro. We're going to play the flam six rolls just like before. And now the character wants to go out and find the girl and tell her. But he's never going to find her. There's a big moment here and a big drum fill. Nice and simple. Right here. And piano and the bass. Boom, just walking down the street there. But now the character realizes he's lost the girl forever, so we're going to be dejected here. We're going to fall back to nothing. We're about to uh, go full throttle here with everybody in. The character realizes that he's got to go on living his life without the girl. Big crash. Hook fill third time. Everybody in. We got a rocket tom pattern, the darabuka. So all this, all the fills here have to be simple for it to work. Got, that got to go. Mm. So there's too much going on to play fancy stuff. It's just got to sit in the pocket and work. Like this one here. We're gonna do offbeats. Anything that we play on a drum, right, left, right, left, whatever it is, is a two-note melody. Even if we're playing on the same drum like a snare drum. This is why singles sound like singles. And doubles only sound like doubles. A paradiddle only sounds like a paradiddle. And an inverted paradiddle only sounds like an inverted paradiddle. So they may sound like a succession of 16th notes to you on the surface, but if you listen, it really, it totally changes because we've changed the articulation. And whenever you change the articulation, you change the sound. And ultimately it's the sound that matters, right? Okay. Let's play 66336. Six, three, three, six. 
Three, three. This is one of my favorites, is the beginning with the two fives takes on a shape that I find pleasing, and let's hear it on the snare drum. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you see, these are tools for you to compose with. You can start writing down these numbers and think of different combinations and change some of the elements. So you can begin to combine these in two bar phrases by playing a new variation every two beats. Just like how we were coming up with bass drum parts for normal beats, you can think of these as four panels, one, two, three, four, and it makes rhythmic sense to kind of have these panels or these phrases change on the second and fourth time while panels one and three remain constant or similar. Another example of this would be linear four, four, eight, four, four, eight. So we'll play linear four twice, eight open hi-hat, four twice, eight offbeat with doubles. <laughs> 